What's up, my name is TechNubber here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, we're going to be covering a super useful topic. Now, this is an update to my previous video that I uploaded, which is in fact one of my most viewed videos. This one over here with 126,000 views in four months and to delete all of your Discord messages quickly. Now, before we get into this video, it has a like ratio of 1.9 thousand to 68, over 126,000 views. And looking into the comments down below, my pinned comment over here was responded to by the actual developer of this script with a couple comments on this video. And these are exactly what I'll be covering in this video with an update to how to actually install it and use it. So before we get into the actual video, what exactly does the script do? Well, having a look at my Discord over here, you can see I've got a bunch of messages in this feed channel. Now, basically, I want to remove all of these tweets over here from the feed so that it's just YouTube videos and that's about it. What you'd usually do is you'd right click and click delete message, then delete. Of course, you can also hold shift, which skips that confirm box. But of course, you still have to right click and click delete on every message. And of course, the same is true for private messages. If you want to delete your own messages, you have to do them one by one. Though something that's a little bit different about private messages is that you can only delete your side of the conversation, i.e. only your messages. And if you want your partner to delete their messages, they have to run the script as well, and it'll run through and delete every single post that they've made to you. Though, of course, on a Discord, if you have the administrator perm, then you're able to delete absolutely everything or just or just what you're searching for. So how exactly do we automate the process of right clicking, deleting and doing it for a bunch of these links? Well, simply head across to the GitHub link in the description down below. This is the open source project page. If you'd like to see how it works, you're more than welcome to go through these over here inspect and see how they work and take them apart for yourself. As to whether you can actually trust this or not, well, it's been starred by 854 people, which means at least this number of people are using this project. Though, of course, not everyone using this project has a GitHub account, so they haven't been able to star it. In fact, I've used it, but I've never started. I'll star it now. Basically, tons and tons of people already use this project. As noted by the developer, he doesn't have any other usage info. GitHub only tells him how many people have landed on the project page and he doesn't really want to add third party analytics to it. But of course, judging by the like and view ratio on my previous video on this topic and the fact that this project is completely open source, I'd say that you can probably trust it. I myself have been using this project for many, many months, though of course, only once in a while. Of course, if you're still worried about giving this project access to your Discord account, don't worry, you can do it only temporarily. What exactly do I mean? Well, once you're done using this project, you can secure your account by changing the token. While this token isn't at all sent out of your browser, as far as I know, it stays perfectly secure. If you're super paranoid about using it, you can check the description down below for a link to this video on my channel on resetting and changing your token. I also give proof in the video that this actually works, so you know that your account is completely safe when you're done using it. Since my previous video, the way that you use this project has changed drastically. What exactly do we need to do? Well, we simply need one of the browsers down here, Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or Opera. Then we simply need to install one of these plugins over here. Tamper Monkey seems to appear in all of these browsers, so that's what I'll be showing you here. Simply head across to the Tamper Monkey link for the browser of your choice. I won't be linking these in the description down below, However, you will find them on the GitHub page linked down below. Once we're on this page, simply click add and it'll add it to your browser. I already have it installed, so I only have the option to remove it. Then it should appear in the top right of your browser up here. We can click on it and we'll get some info on Tamper Monkey. And of course, if you don't see the icon over here, click the little puzzle piece over here and scroll down until you see Tamper Monkey. Then simply click the pin next to it so it's blue and it'll appear on this top bar over here. Once you see it over here, that means that it's working. Then we'll go ahead and install it from either Open User JS or Greasy Fork. I'm more familiar with Greasy Fork, so this is the link that I'll use. Of course, either of these work. Heading across to the Greasy Fork link, all we have to do is click Install This Script. Then over here, we have a small little install button. Click that as well. And of course, if you're curious about how the project actually works, here is the open source script file that we can also find on the GitHub page. All the info that you need is over here. So simply click install and it'll now be added to Tamper Monkey. You won't exactly know that it's installed, but hitting F5 on this greasy fork page, you'll see that button turns into reinstall version. When you see that, we're basically done installing the script and we don't need to run anything in our console. That's all we have to do. Next up, 
head across to discord.com in your browser and sign in. Of course, I'm already signed in, so all I have to do is click open Discord and will be taken across to this page over here. Special note, don't attempt to do this in the desktop version of Discord as it has to be the browser version that we installed the script on. As you can see, Tamper Monkey up here and has a one next to it and you can see that the script is currently running. Of course, if you want to deactivate it at any time, you can simply click the green button next to it to disable it or head across to your dashboard, find the script and click the trash can on the right hand side to uninstall it completely. Anyways, once you're done with that, simply have a look in the top right for the new trash can icon. Click that and we'll get this familiar little interface on Discord bulk delete messages. Now things are a lot easier than in the previous video. Simply click get next to authorization, author and guild slash channel. This will take whatever channel you're in and put all of the info in here. Note that if you change the channel, simply click across to a different place like my discord over here and click get next to guild slash channel once again. Of course, if you click get next to author, this is your ID and it'll only delete messages that you post. If you want to delete all messages, simply get rid of the author message over here completely. Otherwise, if you want to delete someone in particular, head across to the user settings in the bottom left of Discord. Then into the appearance tab, scroll down to the bottom and make sure developer mode is enabled. If we head back to here and right click on a user anywhere, we can click copy ID. Then you can paste that into the author ID and whenever you tell it to delete messages, it'll only delete messages from that user in the guild and channel that you described. What exactly is a guild? Well, it's simply the server that you're in. What is the channel? Well, of course, that's the text channel that you're in. So of course, to keep things nice and simple, I'll type a couple of messages into the feed over here. Let's get to deleting my messages. Because I'm gonna delete only my messages, I'll click get next to author. Then I'll click get next to guild slash channel to get the current channel that we're on. As for the date range, you can set a start date and an end date in here. Clicking the dark calendar icon on the far right hand side of the input box, you'll get a calendar input where you can simply select a date. However, I'll be leaving this as blank. Then we can also set it to only work between certain message IDs. If I said that we only want to delete from this message over here to this message over here, all we need to do is simply find the start message, right click on it and click copy ID. Then we can paste it in the after message ID to only delete the messages newer than that. And if you want it to stop at a certain message, we'll paste that in before message ID so only messages posted before that will be deleted. Now that I've got these two message IDs in here, you can also put another filter on it to only delete messages that contain certain text, has a link or a file. By default, the script won't delete pinned messages, though of course, if you check this box over here, it'll delete pinned messages as well. Now, of course, because I'm recording a video, there's a new button over here called screenshot mode. This is rather useful as it says that it'll try and hide personal information. Now, of course, that hid these over here, but I'll go ahead and disable this once I show you how the script works. Upon clicking start, you can see that it goes through and offers to delete some messages. As you can see, it only pops up with one message over here, which is this one over here that I edited. Why is that? Well, if I disable screenshot mode, you can see these two message IDs over here. That is this one over here and this one over here. It's only offering to delete this message here. What I'll do is I'll delete from R to here, so it'll delete these three messages instead. Copying the ID, pasting it into the before and clicking start. This time you see we have three messages that we can delete. Messages, few and A. Upon clicking OK, it'll run through the messages and delete them one by one very quickly. In fact, on second thought, I don't think I'll be using the screenshot mode as it hides quite a lot. For the sake of this video, I'd rather go through and manually blur out anything if I need to. But anyways, with that aside, what I'm going to do is take out the after and before message IDs as well as the author over here. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to run through this entire channel and only delete messages that contain the link twitter.com. Why is that? Well, I'll go ahead and keep all of these video links over here that were uploads from my friends. If I want to delete messages that only contain twitter.com, over here in the search messages area, I'll type in twitter.com into the text area. Of course, I could also use just tweeted, or if I want to delete messages from only this person, I could copy his name and just tweeted. Then once we do this, we can click start and we'll see a list of messages with three dots at the end, meaning that there's more than it will show on this list. 
I'll click OK and it'll automatically start running through them. Now, of course, as you can see, it's leaving all of the YouTube links over here, but we're only deleting the Twitter links that are here. We can see what messages are already deleted by looking in the feed over here. Now, after deleting quite a few messages, I got to about 31 messages. And as you can see, being rate limited by the API for 106381MS. What exactly does this mean? Well, the Discord API is how we contact Discord and send, delete, etc. messages, voice chat, etc, etc. By sending too many requests to it, they'll eventually throttle us as they think that we're a robot. That's completely fine and completely normal. All we have to do is wait for this to finish. How long is 106,000 milliseconds? Well, divided by a thousand, well, that's just 106 seconds. So we'll just go ahead and wait some time and it'll eventually start deleting messages once again. And unfortunately, it's taking a lot longer than previously. Why? Well, simply because Discord decided to up their API protection, meaning that people can't do automated things like this as quickly as before. Now, of course, because I think it's just frozen over here, what I'm going to do is refresh the page, which will cancel that process. Then I'll simply head back to the correct channel. I'll click the delete button again and quickly set it up. So guild channel containing text, twitter.com, and I'll click start. This time it should run a little bit faster just because I've restarted it. There we go, as expected. So anyways, besides that little blip, it should work quite well. Of course, security on the API has been up since the last time I made a video on this project. So unfortunately, you can't delete messages as quickly as before. You can only do a burst of about 30 of them and then you'll be limited by the API, so you'll have to delete messages a lot slower. Is this the fault of the developer? No, is this the fault of Discord? Well, not necessarily. This is the fault of whoever they're using to secure the API. While it's doing its job of keeping Discord up and making sure that people aren't attacking them by sending tons and tons of requests to their server, it does, of course, slow down things, such as this project over here that just tries to delete a bunch of messages. So, of course, now because I've showed you how to use the filter and get it to work on messages inside of a feed, I'm going to go ahead and head across to my private chat now, though I'll refresh just before I go there. So deleting messages from a private chat, I'll simply click the delete button once again, get authorization, guild channel, and I'll click get next to author. This is rather important, as if you don't click this button, it'll tell you there's an error every time you try to delete a message that isn't yours. Why is that? Well, simply because you can't delete messages that aren't yours in a Discord private message. So I'll leave everything else as is. I've only set the guild channel, authorization, and author. All I need to do is click start, and it'll start running through messages here. I'll click OK, and it'll start deleting only my messages from this conversation. Of course, if you want to stop it at any time, simply click the stop button and it'll be stopped instantaneously. And of course, if you want the entire channel to be cleaned of both your messages and their messages, you'll need to send this project along to them so that they can clear their own messages. You can only delete the messages that you send in a private chat. Assuming you're admin on a Discord, you can go ahead and delete basically any messages there. So anyways, I'm going to leave this running for quite some time. Get rid of the author, search messages for twitter.com, and I'll simply leave this running, going through and deleting all of the Twitter links over here, leaving just the YouTube, which is exactly what I want. When this is eventually done, I'll be happy and things will be good. And of course, just an unfortunate quick side note, if you try and delete messages yourself too quickly by holding down shift to skip that delete dialogue, eventually deleting messages will just no longer work. I'll give you an example here now. And there we go. You can see that me trying to delete these messages is no longer working. Why is that? Well, because we're simply rate limited. I even got here without using the bot. So, of course, using that script makes life quite a bit easier because we don't have to go through and manually delete those messages ourselves. While there isn't a way to actually speed up how long this rate limit takes, you can, in fact, get a bunch of messages deleted very quickly by getting some of your friends to help you on their accounts as well. Unfortunately, other than that, there's no real way to speed up this process. And while editing this video together, it seems that the project has found a comfortable speed that it can delete messages at without actually making the API too angry. It's doing one about every five or so seconds. And of course, it's just going to continue on and on until all of these messages that I've asked it to delete have been deleted. 
Now, of course, it's a lot slower, but you can see that it's slowly running through each and every single message at the fastest speed possible. So of course, if I leave this going overnight, it should have a thousand or so messages deleted if I leave my PC running throughout the night. So a lot slower than before, but at least it's still working. Quick side note from future me, this part of the video was at 526. It is currently 711 and I've finished editing most of my video about to put the outro on. In the background, I've left the script running and it's gone through quite a few messages. It's still in the same chat. And as you can see, it's left only the YouTube videos and deleted only the Twitter messages all the way up to here, October 2019. So it's already covered about a whole year's worth of messages. As you can see down here, we're currently at 532 out of 1,887 messages. For some reason, this count is changing a bit every time it goes by, but you can see it's deleted about 540 something odd messages, which is great. So things are going slowly, but they're working as expected. In fact, I think the second number over here, that's only 158 instead of 530, regards tweets that I've put up because they're technically coming from a different user. But anyways, it's unfortunate that it doesn't work as fast as it used to, though fortunately it still does work at all, which is great news. Anyways, if you want to check out my previous video on this, it'll also be linked down in the description below. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.